If there's any anointing left in me tonight, I need y'all to pull it out of me. Can y'all help me do that tonight? Y'all help me do that tonight. Family, we've declared this um, faith night, and it's interesting because the enemy um, is busy trying to make faith night a night of doubt. And uh, COVID struck some of our some of our people who desperately wanted to be here that couldn't be here. Travel pulled some of us away. Um, emotions have pulled some of us away. But without a doubt, y'all showed up tonight. So I'm going to need, I'm going to need y'all's help. I'm going to need these musicians. I'm going to need everything that we got in the house. Amen. So we're going we gonna to work with what God has given us. Really quickly, we want to go to the scripture. If you got your Bibles, I want you to go with me real quick. Ask everyone that's able to stand for the reading of God's most incredible and holy word. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 9. Um, this is verse 29 of the Good News Translation. I got one scripture um, for you. And it reads just like this. Then Jesus touched their eyes and said, let it happen then, just as you believe. Can, can I repeat this, this, this second part of this clause real quick? Uh, because um, Kemp didn't say this. Uh, Biden didn't say this. Um, Barry Waller didn't say this. Uh, Chris Ropey didn't say this. Nick Saban didn't say this. Kirby Smart didn't say this. It says Jesus touched their eyes and said, impact, let it happen then just as you believe. Thank God for God's word. God's word for God's people. Y'all can have your seats real quick. Family, I'm going to need you tonight as I mentioned. I want to bring forth the whole purpose and reasoning that we're here is because in 2016, God gave me a vision, not just a vision for a church, but God gave me a vision for a region. And the vision that God gave me for a region, you've seen it displayed in a 12 and a half minute clip tonight. Um, and it's interesting when you go back and look at the clips, because sometimes vision seems, Nikki, as if it pauses when really it's progressing. And when a year skips by, you feel like nothing is happening, but really God is always working. And what I learned, and this ain't even a part of the message, but we can shout over this, is that time doesn't really matter to God like that. Because grandmama them used to say he may not come when you want him. Y'all ain't going to have church, man. Y'all see how y'all. But he'll always be on time. So time must not be that big of a factor to God. Maybe, Candace, it's just that time matters to us. But if God is God and who we believe God to be, God is before time, in time, and after time. So time does not matter to God that much as it does to us. So we've been not pausing, but progressing with what we're going to build right next door. And with that family, I want to talk from this subject um, it has flipped and changed several times. And maybe I should just walk y'all through what God was sharing with me. First, the only thing I got, Calvin, was faith. And I was like, well, God, um, that's not a catchy enough subject. Right? Just go out there and say, I want to preach to y'all faith. And, and I said, God, you got to give me something a little bit more attractive. So then I don't know if God said it or if I said it, but then it was access granted told them all the way up to this moment i was god we gonna work with access granted that 
What does that even mean? And I wanted to tell y'all the story. I was hyped about it when I got my first Sega Genesis and the only game I had was Sonic the Hedgehog. And now Sonic the Hedgehog is coming back and it's a big thing. But then it was the only game you had on Sega. And there were certain levels you couldn't get to until you had access granted. But then in the last minutes, um, as I was putting on this super cool t-shirt that I ordered off of Amazon, and I was watching the last few minutes of the video, and God, or me, decided to title this message, Stranger Things. Stranger Things. And what's really interesting, family, is that Ross and Matt Duffer are known as the Duffer Brothers. Um, they were born on February 15th, 1984. They're 38 years old, and now they're well-renowned filmmakers here in America. And what I find about the Duffer Brothers is that in their filmmaking, they went through trials and tribulations and practices and failed opportunities, only for now in 2022 to have blown up through a platform called Netflix. I mean, many of our young people right now with the shirt already recognize what Stranger Things are. And Stranger Things is the hit film series that has aired on Netflix that was produced and made by the Duffer Brothers that has now interestingly made them wealthy, $270 million more wealthy in 2022. But when I was doing research as I do, the first time that they tried to release Stranger Things was on July the 15th, 2016, a Friday. But then, Brandy, it wasn't released to Netflix until October 25th of 2016. And for those of you that paid close enough attention to the video, at the same time that the movie or the hit series Stranger Things was being released to Netflix, I was being released back to Hazelhurst. Maybe that doesn't really crack it open for you, but then I dug a little bit deeper. That not only was it released to Netflix on October 25th, 2016. Not only was I being prayed for and released from House of Hope Atlanta back to Hazelhurst on October 25th, 2016, but it was released in 2016, but did not start to gain traction until 2022. And the whole series of Netflix on Netflix of Stranger Things is surrounded not only by science fiction, but also by supernatural occurrences. Come here, young people. Y'all, please ride with me right here. When you watch Stranger Things, there's a young girl who's numbered as 11. And 11, interestingly, has supernatural powers. And her supernatural powers are not only designed, watch this, to create, but it's also designed to fight off the enemy and the distraction. Okay. And, and as my daughter has spent the summer with me, I started two weeks ago on season number one that was released in 2016. And now I'm on episode six of season number four, which was released in 2022. And family, the point that I'm drawing to us is that throughout this entire series, there are strange things that keep taking place. Every time they get to a place where they're settled and things seem smooth in Hawkins, Indiana, every time they get to a space where Elle can relax and chill and try to be normal, she's reminded that she's not normal. And what am I saying to us tonight, Impact? That stranger things are getting ready to happen right here in this facility. Because isn't it amazing that every time we get to a place where the church is growing steadily, where in 
second come is coming in, that something seems to come up and remind us that we're not just the status quo, that we're not just like everybody else. In fact, I'm not just going to talk about impact, but there's some God-fearing people in the room right now that the moment your life gets quiet, when nobody's bothering you, you're not bothering nobody, that's the moment that the enemy starts to come and raise all kind of cane in your life. Am I talking to anybody that last year your bank account was looking pretty good, but then 22 came in and you was claiming that it was going to be great, but you start and start going downward? It's just a reminder that you're not normal, you're not natural, but you're supernatural. And why do you say that, Craig? Because we're not connected to a normal God. We're not connected to a natural God. But for 15 people in this place that can declare right now, I'm supernatural because I'm connected to a supernatural God. And for everything that's taking place in my life, I welcome, here it is, the stranger things. Because God is getting ready to do things that's unheard, things that's unseen, things that the mind cannot even imagine. Stranger things. I, I, I got I to preach right here. Um, family, when we talk about faith, um, when we talk about, say that again, when we talk about faith, um, I just thought I heard a strange voice. <laughs> oh, no, I got, now I got to show enough preach, man. My brother is here, man. My brothers, my God. When I look at the word faith, tonight is about faith night. Tonight is about stranger things that are about to take place on the property next day, next door. Tonight is about doing something that the mind can't even think of. The Bible says that we cannot even think or even imagine what God has in store for those of us if you can believe. So tonight I was thinking about faith and I was driving um, and I had somebody just pull out and do some research and I'm, I'm big on philosophy. I'm big on thinkers Crystal Lou. Um, I, I really like to dig into these thinkers, right? I have five of my top philosophers, but I really want to focus on three right here. And I think about um, Socrates, right? Socrates is supposed to be like the father, Dr. Dixon, of philosophy, right? We've never seen Socrates before. Nobody's ever touched him physically. All we know is that Plato, he writes for Socrates. So I have always argued and believed that Socrates was not real. He was just a figure of the imagination of Plato. But we're just going to say for the sake of philosophy that Socrates is real. And Socrates, he talks about faith just a little bit, but he says that he believes that there are gods. He's believe, he believes that there is a God, there's higher powers, he says, but he only can connect his faith to the level of the faith of his enemies. That's what Socrates says. His faith is built around the faith of his enemies. I don't know what Socrates was thinking. He believes there's gods, but his faith only goes as far as the faith of his enemies. But then his protege, who was Plato. Plato um, is a little bit different because Nicky Plato tells us that faith provides buys a double armor. In other words, he says, and you can kind of quote this, he says that faith gives you twice the armor. But then Plato had a protege who was Aristotle. And Aristotle says that he does not believe in traditional religion. So he says that the only way that you can have faith is you got to have logic and you got to have reasoning. Now that's different for a lot of us because that does not make sense to us because if you got faith, why do you need logic and why do you need reasoning? Reasoning. But it was Aristotle who said there's got to be one or the other. You're either hot or you're cold. You're either high or you're low. You're short or you're tall. You're wide or you're thin. And he says you got to have logic and reasoning or there has to be faith. So Socrates says that my faith only goes as far as my enemy's faith goes. Plato says if you have faith, you got double armor. Then Aristotle says that faith has to have logic and reasoning. That's what the philosophers say. And sometimes I get so caught up in philosophy. And I forget about what God says. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, so if Socrates, let me run this back to get me hype right here, Melody. Just a little education for us. If Socrates says that his faith only goes as far as his enemy's faith, then he does not have a clue what faith is really about, huh? And if, if Plato says that faith is just double armor, double armor ain't always enough. Let, let me, let me just ask y'all. Have you ever been cold before and you put on two jackets and you were still cold? H have you ever been in a situation where you put on double something and it still didn't 
cannot help. Can you imagine for him to limit faith based on double? I know y'all thought it sounded good when we said Plato said it was double armor, but double armor is not enough faith. So he don't really know what faith is. And Aristotle is out of his mind to think that religion is not a real thing. And to say that you got to have logic and re logic and reason is, is what kills people's faith because you got too many of us trying to make it make sense, trying to put it together, trying to add it up. But when you walk by faith and not by sight, sometimes it don't make sense to you. And is there anybody in here right now that'll testify, Craig, you're right on my street. There's some stuff I've been asking God for that don't make sense to my family. It don't make sense in my neighborhood. It don't make sense nowhere I've been. But I'm walking by faith and trusting. Why? Because God told us, at least the Hebraic writer of Hebrews says, that it is impossible to please God without faith, which means that if you have faith, guess what? You can please God. That's what God says. And then God also says that through Jesus, if you have faith the size of a grain of a mustard seed, you can say to mountains and trees and builders and concrete, get up and move up out of here. Can I just pause and park right here and just see if y'all will wake up with me? We didn't have no money to get the machinery to tear down the woods back there. Some reason the city came over and just wanted to do us a favor. That's by faith. We didn't have the money to bring a brother down from Atlanta to tear that building down with machinery. He just said, if you put gas in the machine, I'll tear the building down. That's faith right there. We didn't have the money to have brothers cut down pine trees and watch them fall. He just came up and said, oh, this a church? I'll do it for the Lord. That's by faith. Can I just go ahead and let y'all know something tonight? The same way God showed up through our faith to do all that stuff, now when we put it in the ground to build it, God going to show up right then too. And I'm feeling good right there, family, but there's about five of you in here right now that you've been asking God for something. I'm just telling you, move by faith. Shake by faith. Grow by, is there anybody in this room right now that has faith enough to believe? So they got faith twisted because my Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet. Family, when we, when we look at Matthew chapter 9, when we take a leap of faith into Matthew chapter 9, uh, Matthew, mama is trying to show us how Jesus authenticates himself as his claimed Messiah. Jesus has made a claim, Kalia, that he is the Messiah. And Matthew shows us, Lavanya, how Jesus is authenticating what he claimed that he was. So Jesus in this chapter, he starts out by healing a paralyzed man and then telling him, your sins are forgiven. And then A.B. Jesus um, convinces Matthew to stop hustling as a tax collector and come follow him. And then Jesus has dinner with Matthew and all the tax collectors. And then Jesus goes through an interrogation of questions with the Pharisees and he answers them. But then Jesus really starts working and then he runs into a young lady who has an issue for 12 years. And Jesus deals with her issue that she has of 12 years. And then Jesus comes back to a house of a young lady who's dead and he wakes her up from death. Jesus now, family, secures what he claimed himself to be through his actions. Mm, I thank you for that post today, Crystal Lewis because this is for you right here when people call you something that's worthy of what God has placed on their heart to speak into your life go ahead and claim what you are let, let, let me see if I can give y'all an example when some the next person that comes by you and tell you that you think you all that in a bag of chips go ahead and claim yes I am all that and a bag of chips 
and Doritos at that, the blue bag. Go ahead, the next time somebody says, oh, you think you got it going on? Let them know, yes, uh, I got it going on. And I dare some people in here tonight to start claiming who you are. I am a multi-millionaire. I am better than what I used to be. I am healed. I am delivered. I am set free. Can you go ahead, y'all ain't acting like it with your actions tonight? Is there anything that you want to claim over your life tonight? Go ahead and declare who you are. Jesus' actions secure who he claims that he is. Uh, my brother is here, so I got to do this. Um, one of the struggles I'm having today, and uh, one of the things that's affecting our faith, is you got people claiming to be stuff that their actions don't line up with. Okay, all right. Uh, how? Oh, no, 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 no. I can't even walk good because I got heard of all stuff we can run. How are you an apostle? Okay, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> no, 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 the camera's on. But you ain't got no, okay. How, how, how you a bishop, but, okay. Your actions should align with what you claim. Okay. Can I just go ahead and testify to y'all real quick? Because I don't want to talk about the apostles. I don't want to talk about the bishops and the chief apostles. I don't want to talk about all the people that have all these big titles. But not, 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 I don't want to talk about those people right now. But can I talk about us in the room? How can you claim that you're a child of God but not walk by faith? How, how can you claim that you're a child of God but you always got an attitude? You always depressed. You always got anxiety. Something's always wrong. Something's always not right. If you're a child of God because you woke up this morning something's right. Uh, if you're a child of God because you were able to walk and move under your own limbs something is right. Is there anybody right now that will testify to the devil I ain't complaining no more the rest of this weekend because I'm a child of God and I'm claiming who I am. How can you claim you healed but keep referencing back to how you used to feel. How, how you claim, Craig, you delivered, but you keep getting snatched by the same thing that you say you delivered from. Maybe some of us got to start putting our actions with our talk. Okay, it's good to see you, Shaquita. I'm going to use this because you're here. Um, you can't claim that you're going to be a homeowner and you don't clean up the apartment you live in. Okay, y'all, y'all, see how y'all, you, you can't claim the new car, but you don't ever put gas and change the oil in the car that you already have. Why would God give you better when you treat what you have like it's nothing? Okay, Millie, um, I'm trying to get to the text and deal with it, um, but I, I feel this a little bit differently. Um, it's too many of us claiming that God ain't working when we ain't doing nothing. Your, no, 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 no. Your faith is not gone. You just not ha you just have not done enough for God to give you what you've been asking for. Okay, y'all ain't liking me right here. You, no, it ain't. You, you ain't got a husband not because your faith is messed up. Your husband is not there because you have not aligned yourself emotionally, mentally, and physically to receive. Okay, y'all ain't to receive your husband. Okay, you got to claim what you are and secure it with your actions. Jesus didn't just say I'm the Messiah. He showed he was the Messiah. Jesus. Matthew says he authenticates what he claimed he was. And Jesus is, oh God, stop. It's interesting because Everything he does in authenticating himself, Melody, is not church. Well, how, how, how do you know that, Cray? Um, we could say the first miracle in chapter 9 was church, right? How, wh why? Because he says you are healed and your sins are forgiven. But the next step of authenticating himself, he's in the street. He sees tax collectors 
that are hustlers. And not only does he convince a tax collector to follow him, watch this, he sits and eats with him. Okay. So, so some of y- I, I hear some of y'all in the spirit. Nobody in here, the people out there, they saying, well, Pastor, that could have been a recession. That could have been at the reception hall. That, that could have been a reception hall. Well, the next thing we know is that he bumps into a lady who's been going to and fro looking for somebody, looking for doctors and physicians, and he runs into her while he's walking, which would suggest to us he's not at church. This is why the dream center is so important because the church may not reach a generation of people, but the dream center will. They may never walk inside impact, but if we can open up a facility over there that has a ballroom where they can do different things, they can come inside there when they may never step over here. If you think that Jesus was only about going in the temple and preaching sermons to win people, then you don't even know my Jesus for real because the real Jesus was out out in the street trying to reach those in the community. Jesus, I got to get y'all out of here. Jesus is authenticating himself as the Messiah, the chosen one, the anointed one. And the text says in verse 22, I love this. I love the way Matthew writes this. Matthew says that Jesus in verse 22 of chapter 9 says to the woman your faith has made you well the verse says then she became healed had a conversation with somebody about this i asked them i said what do you think happens right here this is what they said to me they said well Her faith made Jesus heal her. Can can, can I mess with y'all right here? Look how y'all look. I love when you look at me like that. Can can, can I mess with y'all right here? Y'all with me? Um, This person told me um, her faith made Jesus heal her. Um, But no, 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 no. The scripture says Jesus told her, courage, daughter, your faith has made you well. Watch this. Then she became healed. Jesus didn't spit on her like he did other people. Jesus didn't touch her like he did other people. Jesus didn't do what Benny Hand do. <sighs> Jesus didn't blow on her. Jesus told her, watch this. Your faith has made you well. Then she became healed. You don't even know how powerful your faith is. Okay. While while some of us are waiting on the pastor to come through with a rag and a towel and to sprinkle his or her sweat all over you and you fall out on this concrete and don't get back up, that ain't the Holy Ghost, that's the concrete. And you you waiting on the pastor to come by and lay his hands on you or put his hands over your ears and pray this long prayer. No, 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 no. Your faith can get you whatever it is that you want from God. Your faith can get you the deliverance. Your faith can get you the job. Your faith can get you what you need. Your faith can get you what what you desire. Our faith can get us to Dream Center. It says, Jesus says, by your faith, you are made well. Then she became healed. Watch this, family. I I gotta work this thing slow. The next verse says, and then Jesus went to the official's house. Y'all with me? Um, I like the way Matthew writes this now. Jesus then goes to the official's house. And when he gets there, um, Calvin, um, sis, Aaliyah, 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 I'm sorry, but um, the musicians was there getting ready to play for the funeral. And Jesus told them, y'all got to go. And everybody in here, y'all got to get out. And here it is. And they start laughing at Jesus when he says, the girl is not dead, she's sleeping. Oh, God. Watch this. The musicians had to go because they were preparing to bury something that Jesus had not declared was dead. The people in the room had to go because they didn't have faith enough to believe that what they thought was dead was still alive. 
What am I saying to us? Everything that's not connected to faith, that's been thinking every time they ride, oh, they're not going to do nothing with that property. That, that property is not living. They're not going to build that dream center. They can't raise that kind of money. They just don't know it's not over until he says that it's over. So watch this. Uh, oh, this bless me right here. Musicians got to go because y'all are hired to bury something that's still alive. Okay. Uh, people in here, y'all got to go because y'all don't have faith enough to be connected to me in this season. Okay. Jesus is not denying them salvation. He's just telling them in this moment, you can't be connected to me. Can, can I help somebody real quick? You ain't getting rid of family members forever. It's just that if you don't got faith in this season, I can't have you at my crib. Uh, I, I, we, we still going to be cool. You still my homie. I still love you. But if your faith ain't aligned with mine, you can't be up in my house in this season. It, listen to me, Impact. It's not that we're losing partners. It's not that the church is getting thin. It's that God is clearing out those that don't have faith. Because, oh, because in this season, what God is trying to do, there's people that got to get out. So what I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning, God, not to focus on the numbers as much as I used to. I'm learning, Nikki, that I got to lock in because this is not about God not letting Cray be mega because you could be mega and not even know you're mega. It's not about God not letting Cray have influence because you influence people that never tell you that you influence them. This is not about God saying, Cray, you're not, you not enough. You don't have all that because God wouldn't have called Cray if Cray was not enough. What I'm learning, Miss Stacy, is that it's going to fit out in this season because God is just trying to bring people that know when we get ready to sow you ain't being robbed but you're building something that's going to outlive you J Jesus says oh y'all gotta go y'all gotta get up out of here y'all gotta go because y'all are trying to bury something that's not dead and y'all don't have faith enough to be connected in this moment they have to go but this is where it got inter interesting right here Bishop Gibbs is I went back to verse 22 because I couldn't shake it. And the woman's faith healed her. And after the woman's faith activated and healed her, then Jesus went to deal with the girl that was dead. Can, can, I, can I mess with y'all right here just a little bit more? I believe that this woman's faith prompted Jesus to go do another miracle. In other words, let me see if I can make it like this. One woman's faith moved Jesus to heal somebody else in the region. Come here, Impact, because y'all didn't catch it. If you get faith in this building, it's going to move Jesus to give other people miracles. And we're not a church that's selfish enough that want it all for ourselves, but God has put us here to have faith that it impacts somebody else that thought that they were dead, but they're still alive. I believe that her faith prompted Jesus to move. Can, can I tell y'all something else that I dug up in this? Uh, so, Caleb, uh, Bishop Gibbs, Dr. Dixon, um, it's believed by scholars they're in Capernaum. And I was trying to measure, the verse turns over so quickly, right? Right after she gets healed, um, it says, then Jesus goes to the official's house, right? Um, so, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, um, you know, I grew up in the country, and, uh, you know, in Baxley, out there, Tina, and Mac here, and, uh, you know, the store was a long ways away, Right? It, well, you, could, you, you couldn't walk to that store. You, know, you, you, you had to get on the back of a truck and get to the store. Um, so I'm trying to figure out, because that, that scene as a kid, like, as if it was a really, really long drive. Um, Brandy, it felt like um, it was one of them rides um, on the Greyhound bus when your mama sent you to Dublin, um, like 250 miles. Um, it, it felt like a long ride. But I thought about this. I'm trying to compare. So I'm giving the benefit of the doubt in the text, right? I'm saying, okay, maybe, maybe the verse, maybe there's like a short journey in between um, from where Jesus was with her to where Jesus was 
was with official. So I'm like, maybe it was like one of those bus rides on a Greyhound um, from Statesboro or Reesville over to Dublin. Or maybe it was one of those trips from out there in Mac Tear up to Carver's store on the corner. Or maybe for those of you that lived out in the country in Hazelhurst trying to get to the park. Maybe it was one of those. I said, I'm giving the benefit of the doubt. But then God dropped something on me and God revealed to me, no, it didn't happen in a long period of time. It happened instantly. Like soon as Jesus left her, Jesus went over to the official, which says to me that Jesus never left the region. So when the girl, when the woman established faith in the region, Jesus just picked up the faith she established in the region and took it to another place in the region. What am I saying to us right now? What you've been called to do, Impact, when you build the Dream Center, it's not going to just establish faith in Hazelhurst, but it's going to establish faith in the region. And I just believe that God did not call us, Briley, just to have faith right here, but God needs there to be faith in Vidalia, in Dublin, in America, in Statesboro, in Reedsville, in Baxley, in Vidalia, everywhere around us. If you build faith right here, it'll be established in the region. This is getting good. I got to hear up and walk out of this. Um, so Jesus is now at the official's house. And Minister Bill, he kicks everybody out. And he says, Matthew says, and he wakes the girl up. She's alive. But then it says Jesus left that place. Jesus, you put your stamp there. Impact, y'all not ready. Y'all, y'all, y'all not ready. And then he left that place. I've established life. Okay, let me show y'all where he got. Y'all, y'all. He, he's, he's established life in the woman who had the 12 years of hemorrhaging, right? She could have bled to death, but when her faith activated, she got life. The young girl that was dead, according to everybody else, they were preparing a funeral. Jesus came and gave her life. And after Jesus established life in that region, the Bible says he left that place. Can I help us right quick impact? The dream center will not be the last dream center that you plant. Impact church will not be the last church that you plant. But when you provide life in this city, then you got to go to the next place. I got to get to this. Uh, so Jesus left that place and watch this. And as he's walking alone, Ebony, the Bible says two blind men come and follow him. Wait a minute now. Is this thing on? Check, check, two, three, seven, eight, nine. The blind men, Keith, Caleb, you gonna, I'm gonna hurt myself. How are you following what you cannot see? Because the previous ending of the verse said, after Jesus healed the girl, the news about what he did spread it. And now, though I do not have vision, faith don't come by seeing. But the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And if Jesus is the word, two blind men start following what they cannot see. Can I testify right here and keep it honest with y'all? When God called me in the ministry, nobody in my family was a preacher. When God called me in the ministry, nobody had told me how to preach. I was sitting on my futon in my apartment at 617 Box Avenue, Troy, Alabama. I was drinking a Budweiser, watching season three of Martin Lawrence show. And then I heard an audible voice speak to me and ask me, can you promote me the same way you promote your fraternity? And I looked around the house because I knew I wasn't tipsy off of one Budweiser. So I'm looking around the house trying to figure out who's talking to me or what's saying to me and why am I answering something that I cannot 
cannot see. And that was in the moment right there, family, that I started following what I cannot see. And I just want to testify to the world real quick. Ain't nothing going to stop me because for 14 years, I've been following what I could not see. I've been trusting what I could not see. And some of you right now can testify in this room. Your whole life has been a fake journey. You didn't know how you was going to pay your bills sometime, but you trusted what you could not see. You didn't know how your children was going to make it, but you followed what you cannot see. You didn't know how you was going to get through school, but you followed what you could not see. Two blind men are following what they cannot see. The text says they start following Jesus. Watch this. And they say, Tiger, this going to get you through college. You ready for it? Son of David, have mercy on me. Can I talk to some students in here that plan to go to college and graduate, get a good job, buy your pastor a car and your mom and daddy a house? Can I talk to you real quick and let you know that what's going to get you through is the nights when school is tough, the nights when temptation is alive, the nights when you feel lonely because you're away from home. If you can cry out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. Can I help somebody who's battling right now, who's going through in this moment? Can I let you know how you're going to survive? It's going to be the nights in your house when you can cry out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. Can I just Let's go ahead and give y'all the other alias that he goes by. He goes by the bright and morning star. He goes by the wheel in the middle of the wheel. In fact, we can just say this all together. He goes by Jesus. And there's going to be nights when you don't feel like you can make it. You can call on Jesus. There's going to be times when you can't see your way through, but you can call on Jesus. If there's some Jesus lovers in here right now, better scream out, Jesus. My vision is gone, but I can hear his steps. Say, so they scream out, Dr. Dixon, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. And here's what I love right here, Cam. It says, according to Matthew, when Jesus went indoors, I ain't even got time to deal with that right now. Said so when Jesus went indoors, they followed him. I'm struggling. How are these blind men so committed to something that they cannot see? How can I sow my energy? of yelling to something that I cannot see? How can I exert my energy of walking behind something that I cannot see? What stranger things can happen than people that cannot see something be willing to commit to it? All you see is dirt over there. But can you blindly commit to it? All you see is grass over there. But can you blindly commit to it? All you hear is me talking about it. But can you blindly commit to it? Everybody in here is not from Impact, so can, can I talk to you? Can you blindly commit to what you're asking God for? If you're single and not married, can you blindly commit to preparing yourself to be a spouse? You want the job, can you blindly commit to it? You say you want the house. Start now paying the mortgage for the house you don't have yet.
Can you take the mortgage every month out of your account and put it back in your savings like you're paying the mortgage for what you cannot see?